Om Shri Sai Ram Humble prostrations at the divine lotus feet of our beloved master Bhagavan Shri Satya Sai Baba Dhyana Vahini Chapter 3 The Goal of Meditation Summary Control the temper of the mind Living is either pleasant or unpleasant depending upon one's basic attitude towards life and the condition of the mind. Life on earth is almost a guaranteed set of ups and downs in some form at some time or the other. If we train our minds to treat them all as an experience without classifying them as good or bad, then one can be happy all the time. Then all troubles, whatever their nature, will pass away lightly and quickly. Concentration and one-pointedness are the keys. Concentration is needed to grasp any subject well. Concentration and one-pointedness help us to focus effort on any selected task. This one-pointedness, this conquest of the mind is acquired by the exercise of meditation. Yearn for the right thing. Yearning must have the strength to inspire endeavor. In fact, yearning is but dormant endeavor. An endeavor is yearning in action. But it is important to yearn for the right thing. First, yearning. Then, selection of the goal. Then, concentration. And through the discipline, conquest of the mind. That is the object of meditation. When the heights of meditations are reached, this understanding becomes so strong that one's lower nature is destroyed and burnt to ashes. Then only you remain. Once it is reached, there is no meditation and no meditator. All merge into one. Reaching the goal through meditation. Since the Atma pervades all equally and steadily, the individual also loses the I-ness and gets immersed in its inherent divine status. Such a person is the real great soul, Mahatma, a liberated soul, Jivan Mukta. Fullness is bliss, Ananda. Bliss is peace, Shanti. To diminish the wanderings of your thoughts, repeat the name of the Lord. That will keep out your sorrows and troubles. Without the effacement of the mind, spiritual wisdom or jnana cannot dawn. The full person is one who has succeeded in this. Gain inward vision. The spiritual aspirant must first learn the secret of the inward sight, the vision directed inward and take the attention away from the exterior. The spiritual aspirant can enter the inner quest through the gate of self-examination. That gate accords welcome into the highest and holiest status possible in every life to every aspirant who is endowed with humility and devotion. Key takeaways from this chapter Firstly, Left to its own devices, the mind relentlessly seeks more pleasure and wishes to avoid pain. All the happenings and events in our lives are just experiences. It is the mind that classifies them into good and bad, passes judgment on the experiences and makes us happy or sad. If we simply learn how to control our minds better without being held ransom to the vagaries of classification of different external experiences, we could teach ourselves to be happy all the time while simply experiencing life. Secondly, yearning appears to be like desire, which is typically frowned upon in a spiritual sense. But desires arise out of our minds, egos, sensory tendencies and inclinations. Yearning is a much deeper pull of the spirit and if directed to the right goal of realization of our Atmic selves, it can make a big motivation and a tool to pull us to itself. Thirdly, turning inwards involves a deep inquiry into who am I, Koham, without any concern of relative success or failures of the external world. 
meditating deeply on this inquiry and peeling the onion with each level of falsehood we encounter in the inner journey with purity of intent and humility of heart will eventually lead us to the single unified truth of unchanging bliss end of chapter 3 jay sairam